So here we have a nice exercise, friends. If f is a quadratic function such as f of 0 is 1 and this integral is a rational function, find the value of f prime. So first of all, because f is quadratic, that means f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus 1. Why? Because f of 0 is 1. That means that the constant in this quadratic function is equal to 1 right here. If you replace x with 0, you would have a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus 1. Now that that is settled, look what happens when you differentiate this expression on the right side. By the power rule, it's 2ax plus b. So that means specifically f prime of 0, that would be equal to 2a times 0 plus b, but that's just equal to b. In other words, the lowercase b is our value that we are looking for, f prime of 0. Now we have to relate this to this integral. So how do we think about this? Remember, the integral is a rational function. It's given to us as such. So I'm going to have the following, in other words. This antiderivative, and then put that in there, and the numerator, that is. So ax squared plus bx plus 1. And in the bottom, I'm going to have x squared multiplied x plus 1 cubed dx. Now, we are told this is a rational function once you anti-differentiate. So let's do some partial fractions, usually. And given the nature of this integrand with the x squared multiplying x plus 1 cubed, I'm going to have ax squared plus bx plus 1, and this is hanging here over this x squared times x plus 1 quantity cubed. And on the right side, I'm going to have capital A, not lowercase a, over x plus capital B over x squared. So you just apply here the, the ascending powers of x followed by x squared and so on. Then you apply that same thing to x plus 1. So c over, let's see x plus 1 plus a, b, c, d over, let's see, x plus 1 squared, and then plus a, b, c, d, e over x plus 1 quantity cubed this way. Now, multiply it through by x squared times x plus 1 quantity cubed. When you do that, you will have ax squared plus bx plus 1. What happens on the right side? You have to be very careful. You see, you're told the integral, once it's done, is a rational function. That means a over x and c over x plus 1 have to go away. Why? Because when you anti-differentiate a over x, you get an ln. When you anti-differentiate c over x plus 1, you get an ln. It would break the fact that we are told that this antiderivative here is a rational function. You cannot have the ln function anywhere. As we do this, what we can say essentially as an intermediate step quickly is that the following is true, like a and then c, each of those is equal to 0. So that leaves us then with the following b. Now what happens? When you multiply by x squared times x plus 1 cubed, the x squared part goes away. That's going to leave you with b multiplying x plus 1 cubed plus okay, the c is gone. Then for the d, it's going to give you d times x squared and it's going to be multiplied further by the following. You have x plus 1 cubed divided by x plus 1 squared. That's going to leave you an extra x plus 1. At the very end, e and then x plus 1 cubed cancels with this one leaving x squared, so it's x squared this way. Distribute and clean up a little bit. So ax squared plus bx plus 1 is equal to capital B. Expand the expression there. So it's going to be x cubed, rather, plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 by, say, Pascal's triangle. Okay, expand that other one a little bit. So dx cubed plus dx squared plus bx squared this way. Now, let's continue. So it's going to be ax squared plus bx plus 1. On the right side, distribute the b to each term within the brackets. So bx cubed plus 3bx squared plus 3bx plus b. And then attach the remaining terms at the end there as dx cubed plus dx squared plus ex squared this way. Now, compare. Between the two sides of this equation, b and the 1 would be matched. That means, in other words, capital B has the value 1, constant value, which now means, since the goal is to find little b, not capital B, I would say bx from the left side would be equal to 3bx from the right side. But we know that b is 1, so we have bx is equal to 3x, because b is 1. Divide the x away, x is not 0, so b is equal to 3. That completes the question. Please be sure to subscribe and like.